chosen to be in an area of art and entertainment that is not popular to the masses. Bar for 28 years. He is arguably one of the world's greatest jazz percussionists. He's played with the likes of Dizzy Gillespie, Cannonball Adderley, Nina Simone, Stevie Wonder, Farrell Sanders, and Paul Simon. He's taught at the University of Illinois, University of Nebraska, and is an artist in residence to the city of Bordeaux, France. Well, the thing is, is that hopefully as you get older, you get smart. Right. And in some ways, I'm a slow learner, <laughs> but I'm definitely getting smarter. He's won numerous awards and has performed in nearly every country in the world. The three of us should get those, and we just come on the stage. You probably should. He's also my close friend. We both grew up on the south side of Chicago. His instrument is the earth drum, and he plays it like no one else you've ever seen. I couldn't um, imagine doing anything else. I live and breathe my work to this day. I've never smoked reefer or marijuana, never taken any drugs in my life, never drank, um, because I had seen it all my life, and so that was something that I just could not connect with, uh, because I saw so many talents that had abused their talent by a lack of personal discipline. And I think it's just a fantastic percussionist literally i mean he's got the greatest feel and groove like of almost anybody i've ever played with and i've played with a lot of the greats obviously and i just love his music love playing with him he's very spontaneous we interact well together um my slightly more scholarly approach and his a little more earthy approach have a nice compliment to each other I love playing with Kyle Hill because it was it was a challenge from every aspect of life. <laughs> every aspect of life. I remember the first time talking to him, and I think we ended up talking for two or three hours that day. It went from one song that one day that we were supposed to license to two to three years of working together. Yeah, we've been knowing each other since we were like teenagers. Right. Pretty much early 20s. I know his concept. So it was frustrating to me to see reality shows on every channel, creating so-called celebrities who became famous for doing nothing, creating nothing, and giving nothing. Yet my friend, the most gifted electrifying musician I've ever seen play live, is still not known to the world. What is the obstacle between Cahill and the recognition he deserves? So for six weeks, it was me and my camera on tour with him to see if I could discover the mystery of Cahill El Zubar.
But first, a little something about us. Cahill and I both grew up on the south side of Chicago. That's me. That's Cahill. Cahill's father was a policeman and played drums. His mother had a bridal business. My mom taught school and my dad worked for the CTA. We both went to college in Chicago. Cahill grew to become one of the most sought after live performers in Chicago. When he toured the world, his reputation began to grow. I discovered my writing talent and moved to Los Angeles. I directed feature films and made documentaries from all over the world. I even sold a screenplay to Steven Spielberg. But I never forgot Cahill and his talent. In fact, he starred in one of my very first short films. Where'd you get this? Does it matter where I got it from? Where'd you get the cash? Why do you keep asking me where I got the cash? Either you want it or you don't. Thanks, Beth. I'll take that as a yes. That film didn't do much at the box office. But Cahill and I have been friends ever since. How different is this going to be from other tours you've been on? Well, the name of this tune we just did is new. And it's basically There Is A Way. So the whole point is, shit, after 30 some years, there's still a way. I'm still excited. I still believe in the music, and I still enjoy the people that I work with. So I feel blessed. And every time I play with Kai, I remember how he loves to play music. And how good it is to play music. How good it is to get paid to play music. <laughs> uh, my thoughts, I'm looking forward to it because this will be the first time, um, actually, the first time I've met Fareed, and it'll be the first time to get to perform with him with this group as a whole. And um, to me, this ensemble is more than notes. It's about energy. It's another tour, man. You know, let's hit the road. I'm ready to roll. When do we start? Where do we go first, you know? We're headed to Baltimore. Baltimore, baby. Fareed had a prior engagement and couldn't make the first night of the tour. You know, like, you constantly hear with the artist, you know, it's his ego that was his failure. It's his ego that's the block. And this motherfucking ego that created all this work. It's the ego that created Picasso's work. It's the ego that created Stravinsky's work. The ego that created Miles Davis's work. The ego created John Coltrane's work. The artist's ego has been essential to the centering of their force in order to bring, in, bring brilliance through creative effort. We arrived in Baltimore late. If Brad, the venue manager, was upset, it was not evident to the band. Then we'll do our... I'll leave, all you, guys, I'll leave you guys some water over there. All blues. So I'll just make a, like a, a, a minute's announcement and then just bring you guys up, yeah? Where's the bathroom? Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> 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 you ready? All right. See you guys. Um, once again, thanks for waiting. Oh, uh, we're kind of close. We're not that close, but we're relatively close. We were closer before he had kids, of course. You know, his time is dedicated to those kids, you know, so. <laughs> but, you know, we pick up from where we left off, so we're, we're cool in that sense. Baltimore showed me how great this band still is, even with one member missing. After all these years, Cahill is still energetic and passionate about his music. The dedicated fans really saw a great show tonight. Good, man. It's, you know, chill but intense at the same time. I hope they buy some records. Well, the last time we did something like with Cahill, where he gave us like a little break on the prices. Henry wants to take nine of the stock. But he said in the past you'd give him a, you'd give him a deal. Okay. But he said nine bucks. I mean, that's you making a buck eighty. The last time it was ten. That's what I mean. I, that's what I figured to go with. Yeah, just tell them 10. Okay. If it's 10, we'll give you some back because okay. we just take one each. Okay. We are not youth anymore. And that's where this idea to be known comes from, that we might as well say what we intend to do, to be known. 
and not out of some ego shit, out of the necessity of having people be aware of the service we provide so that um, they can pay us to do our work. Now is the time to be known. Look at this motherfucker. Stop. God damn. A little too much for me. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I get on the stage and I told him, I say, look, there's no re reason that we should be treated like this. You know, as much as we've given to this music. And this is my city. No one would help us carry to our the stuff. Audience, you said this? Yeah. Oh, you pissed her off. Man, man. She, uh, she said, you little work. I will kill you. You won't do anything. And you're just too fucking egotistical. And you've lost your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I want to tell everyone that you went to jail for child support and they actually called us for some tax returns on you. So I said, fuck you. You yeah. never went to jail. You know, you can do whatever you want to do. I don't care. I haven't hung out with Cahill in a while, but was that a wise thing to do? I'm just pissed, man. I'm just tired of this shit. To say something like that oh, to shit. a Chicago audience in his hometown, is this another clue to Cahill's situation? This particular tour, I don't, it wasn't my first tour with him, but it's always down to the bare basics, to the bare minimum of music, you know. I think he would like to be a musician who believes in community, but I think he may be more comfortable in situations where he's the, 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 the focal and the center of attention. Yeah, and that's not, not, a, not, not a criticism in any way. It's just, if that's what you do, that's what you do. When I play concert guitar, you know, you sit quietly, you listen, and you're gonna get more out of the music that way because that's what the music is about. The Philly show was packed and the fans bought lots of CDs, they asked for autographs, they take pictures with him. They also provide lots of reminiscing because he's built this audience. I did notice one person was missing. The Philly show was great, and the next morning, the spirits were high with hey, the band. Girl, what's up? Hey, I'm out of town, okay? I'm, Daddy's not in, in uh, Chicago. Well, where are you going to Spain? I'm in, Phila I'm in Philadelphia. Sí, que sí. Exacto. Pero para mí es muy loco, porque todo lo... Can't get what she wanted, you know what I mean? Están en esa dirección. I noticed after Cahill's young daughter hung up on him, his enthusiasm fell. He was noticeably down and agitated. Don't get off. Stay straight, stay straight, stay straight. Cahill is moving slowly, and I'm not sure what's going on with him. He said his stomach hurts, but his energy seems so down. You all right, man? Just go lay down. Yeah, man, I'm just cramped up. Whatever his problem was before the show, the crowd and the music reinvigorated him. That Cahill has built this audience here. Right. This is huge. Right. This is a rainy night, and Myron Melford and, and Leroy Jenkins are in Baltimore at the same time. Right. I mean, and he's still pulling an audience like this in mm -hmm. D.C. Mm -hmm. on Westmoreland Street in Tacoma Park. <laughs> <laughs> and that's significant, I suspect. Right. We end up leaving yeah. later than we thought. Yeah, I'm just getting on the 495 now, so I'm leaving out of D.C. at this moment. Anyway, it's with the ethnics, and we saw this little pretty blonde. She was sitting at this table, and uh, so we started talking, and she was receptive, you know, personality and shit. So uh, eventually, I pulled the chick, Jack. Kept hitting, 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 talking, talking, talking. So I said, you ready to go? 
And so we thought she had been sitting. She was standing up. Her head was over the table. <laughs> <laughs> and she walked out, Jack. Man, everybody fell on the motherfucking floor, man. But I had to, like, play it off because she was fine. Had little titties, like, you know, little the little cones, those little paper cups for the ice cones and shit. Little titties about like that. Little bitty pretty arms. Had a little sway in her booty. But she was a sight to behold, man, naked. I mean, it's like a fine miniature woman. <laughs> Real miniature woman. So I couldn't let go of it for a while, Jack. <laughs> oh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I could not let go of that, Jack. It's just that she comes to about your, you know, she's about as high, about dick high. She's about dick high, exactly. <laughs> but on the road, man, it's all kind of shit, Jack. Skippy. It's all kind of shit. For as many years as I can remember, Black History Month is the best month for Kai Hill to actually work consistently. It looks like Christmas here. This year, he's been asked to give a week-long seminar at Lake Forest College in upscale Lake Forest, Illinois. It is basically a week-long gig. Corey, where were you last today? <laughs> we were in uh, D.C. And now we're in Chicago. About to head to Lake Forest to our fumes. Literally, about <laughs> two hours of sleep max. This is money, money, money. money. This motherfucker costs damn near thirty-five thousand dollars a year. It's a big house. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes, big house. There are other people here when you hear. So when you come in late at night, keep your voices down, mm -hmm. uh, please. Hang on to the keys. Come and go. And definitely don't leave campus without returning our keys. <laughs> First stop, art class and the building of homemade musical instruments. For a large concert, Cahill says he'll be giving and conducting at the end of the week. I thought this was a pretty ambitious endeavor. He's never even met these students. See you tomorrow. They did great, a lot of work done. We got flutes done, we got zithers done, we got thumb pianos done, we got a bass done. Which both the audience and the musicians felt part of the same energy. So please come mingle with musicians and expect wonderful evening of creative genre defying music presented without amplification. I'm telling you, there's gonna be some freaks there. <laughs> See, this is gonna be some uppity shit, but it's gonna have some holes there, Jack. <laughs> Call me and let me know. Because it's, 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 it's gonna move through you and that energy. They'll have these like killer freaks who make money there. I get to pick at least two vampires. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to introduce you to Cahill. <laughs> From Transvania. <Transfer, yeah. laughs> get the head tilt. See, you, you gotta watch that head tilt when he does that shit. <laughs> There's gonna be freaks of it, you know, well dressed north side little freaks. It's corny than a motherfucker, but. Yeah, man. You know, walking around this campus is deep, yeah. Like a, shit, I had like a 3.5 average. I had gone from like having. D minuses and C's all my life to 3.5, because a lot of the stuff they did with me, they did with oral testing, because they realized I was dyslexic. And so it was the first time I really had real focus, care with education. But all these cats look alike, like the professors and shit. Like, yeah. They look, it's like a, a protected little environment where they really appreciate intellect. So it's like bodies, but the head is more important. The bodies are just carrying the brain. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Cherokee is this um, tune and you kind of hear this melody. We'll play that down once or twice, and then we improvise, but we keep in our mind the melody as we go on. So it's kind of like always structure and without structure, simultaneously as an improviser. My life 
as um, a poet, as a musician, um, I'm striving for a space of transcendence. How do you get that, you know? As a writer, how do you approach in yourself? How do you feel transcendence? How do you get off the page? Where's your energy space? Art has utility. And that as you create a piece, what purpose does it have? As you create a piece, what story are you telling? As you create a piece, what audiences or audience are you going to? As you create a piece, what is the legacy? What's the history? I can't do what I do without being excited. I can't do what I do without being in it like that. In my gut, because I want to give you something that comes from me that says it's real, that says I believe in it, that says that it's an aspiration, something that I'm working for. And if there's anything that will genuinely happen in your life that will affect change, it will be because it's something that takes you to a space. But the thing is that we are not looking at is that it is a phenomena of the social engineering of the entire environment. And the more you know about different cultures, not just jazz, whatever, you have different cultures of the world, literature, music, film, you know, visual arts, that advances you as a human being. Duke Ellington in the 1930s was like Michael Jackson in the 1980s and the 90s. Jazz was not music of old people. And the people who created these different styles from decade to decade were very, very young adults. When Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie invented bebop they were in their early 20s when i started playing with gene Adams, i was 16 years old it was never really the music of old people you know all the dancing fred astaire and all that and the music of cole porter and the beautiful long dresses and all that kind of stuff that's gene little knives and the motorcycle jack is like hey daddy yo what's happening cool well this is the beginning of the like the, the cool generation the beatniks that's the 50s, that's jazz. We're a rare breed. People who want to be outside the box, who want to use the inspiration of their intuitive clinician to express creative meaning. What is that? How do you get to that? When we think about the traditions of jazz, if Louis Armstrong's at the beginning and he's considered experimental, then what's part of the tradition of being a <clears throat> jazz musician? To be what? Experiment. That's been the key of the music. So when they think of this idea of so-called trad jazz or traditional jazz, the tradition is to be a pioneer. The tradition is to do something different. The tradition is actually to explore. And when you think about every decade of this music, the folks who changed the music from one direction or another were people who were experimental. So in every part of life, improvisation is essential. The reason we survived as pioneers through the America is because we had to improvise our way with shelter, with food, with economics. And so when you think about jazz, again, I say, don't think about it just as music. Think about it as part of the social engineering and, 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 and the foundation within our society. Because what does jazz do? It hybrids the fusion of various cultures into a new voice. I, I really thought that it was really cool to have this like old English room that we described in the beginning of the year, like stuffy and you know Optical. weird. And, <laughs> <laughs> few color paint on the Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, to just be transformed with all this like liveliness and passion and just it was really awesome. Like it was oh, really you. great. Like I really appreciate you guys. I worry continually about timetables, schedules, getting them to where they want to go, and all of my anxieties prove to be completely groundless. They have, they're not only where they should be, when they should be just on time, but they do a fantastic job. Oh, boy.
times better than I feared because I was worried about the students being able to accomplish this task. I didn't think they were capable of it, but I was wrong and I was delighted to be wrong. I, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. The audience were, you know, they were very attentive. Nobody left. They were completely wow, that's, that's with a good it. Point. Mm -hmm. They that's were a good completely point. with it the whole time. <laughs> they made sounds that I've never heard before. That night was a planning meeting in Cahill's law for yet another teaching venture, another gig. On Chicago's inner city, Sasha High School, he handpicked each member of the staff. Over the next three or four years, they may be our future employees, they may be our future patrons, they may be our future band leaders or our future projects. There's like, it South Shores is indicative of many of the school, schools in terms of all of this great talent without the opportunities to mentor, to nurture, and create an artistic future. The end result is that we want to have a tight, professional project within these two weeks. So we deal with them as adults. Okay, check this out. We're gonna do this in like about five minutes. Yes, you know, Kahil knows how to put on a show. And for the most part, when he feels something, he's, he's accurate. It's something that speaks, you know, highly of his intelligence and genius that, you know, he can communicate with people on multiple different levels that way. Um, and on a very human level, no matter what you're into, um, if you have some type of little spark or light creativity in you, he's gonna find it once you shine it out, no matter what your background is. Now on this side, we're gonna count it to them. Thank you. 
after a week. It's clear attendance is lower than when we began. So we got all the classes, we got, great. All right, so now if I can get everybody to stand up and do a little breathing. Oh, that's a lot of breathing. people were here, um, what do you think that's about? Attention span, you know, um, this is a lot of work. So you think 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, consistency, commitment. I think we're doing extraordinary. We start out with 50, if we end up with 40, we matriculated to like losing 10. I ain't gonna cry about that at all. Especially like the level that I see that has developed. How many years have you known Cahill? I've known Cahill for approximately uh, 15 years. First of all, there's you know one part which I think Cahill's learned from, and that is, you know, he likes women. Women like him. You know, if you're one, what's not to like? He's uh, intelligent, talented. You know, he's got he's he's wonderful. So um, you know, I know he had a, a very brief relationship with a woman. He's told me about this a number of years ago, in which this woman you know, won't let go. She claims that uh, he was the father of a child that she had, and she feels she wants to make him pay for breaking up with her. Um, that's my understanding. It sounds like she is, you know, an intelligent, articulate woman who knows how to work the system, and she has been able to convince people in the state's attorney's office that um, you know, Cahill is um, a wealthy man who is not following through on whatever arrangement supposedly was made about, um, you know, child support. Everybody that knows him knows that, um, you know, he always follows through. And, and this is in a, 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 cult, a, a culture that uh, people get screwed all the time in business. You know, the, the women that have fathered his children not only continue to work for him and with him, they work with each other, which is rare. You find me, a, a, you know, a man who's able, I mean, it's just amazing that he can make that happen. I couldn't do it if I, I, I never got divorced, but I couldn't do that, so. All men, why do you take the vision in the pit? Why, this is all for her, why do you take the See, with these students, it's not like the old days when we were going to school. It's the passion. You, to be a teacher now, you have to have a passion because you have to go beyond just teaching whatever A, B, C, D on the blackboard. You have to love the children first because that's what the children need most. That's what they're lacking. The main thing that's wrong with the, with the students is they need love. Some of you all could really be seriously accomplished professionals. The vocal group is ready to go right now. But they need management. They need people to be able to mentor them and let them know what it's like to be out here and how to do it. We want folks from our neighborhood to be successful. Confidence, being able to project yourself, being able to know that you're good, but not be ego, just say, I got a gift from the creator. And then to put that in your work. And the other thing is, if you're not enthusiastic about it, and it's something that you really don't want to do, you shouldn't do it. You should never do nothing that you don't really want to do. See, because this thing goes quick. Life goes quick. If you wasn't disciplined at 10, 11, 12, 13, you ain't going to make that 10, 20 million dollars a year. So whatever you're going to do, and it's not necessarily arts. If you're going to go into business, if you're going to go into to child care, if you're going to go into nursing, if you're going to be an architect, if you're going to be a lawyer, if you're going to be a, 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 an officer of the law, whatever areas you go into, I'm telling y'all, right, it ain't no game. It starts right now. 
It's a large group of people, but if we keep going and knowing we've rehearsed and that we've worked on something, we can be confident that we'll figure out a way to make it happen, to make it look good. So keep in your mind, don't get too upset about some of the mistakes, that's what rehearsals are about. And think the whole time, even when you're behind stage, you are always in performance. Come with your presence. Come with people wanting to feel that word. Our power of white has combined as one. Umoja, umoja, umoja. You gotta walk up and you gotta come to the front. I'll take that. Okay. You're in the performance. Isn't that style and grace, baby? That's the go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, quiet. The dance choreography for this particular second piece. Perfect, perfect. At the end of the performance, it dramatically ended. Everybody's like. I'm doing way better. I'm doing way better. I'm ready. You're ready. You ready? I'm ready. You see the article? Huh? You see the article? Did I see your picture? Yeah, for the Tribune. Did I see your picture for the Tribune? Where? He has it. You do? all together in a short period of time. It's amazing. I don't know how we did it. Um, you know, I know he's done a lot of stuff like this in the past, but this one was just, it was inspiring. We're here trying to expose them to art, show them opportunities in art, uh, have them, give them an opportunity rather where they can work with other professionals and more importantly to see it culminate in a big event. We are where must we fight. In today's society, we need emotion, emotion in our lives. We did the, the big short, the big the emoji show um, with the students from South Shore. Uh, police marshals showed up at the concert. They wanted to arrest him. They had a warrant for his arrest for the child support case. Luckily, we were able to ask the police to let him perform first, and then if they needed to arrest him, they could arrest him after the show, but at least let him get paid because if the issue is that he's not paying or you know he doesn't have the money, at least let him get paid. By all accounts, this was another success. When I asked Cahill about the marshal showing up, he really had nothing to say. In fact, he was pretty mad at me for bringing it up. The next day, Cahill spent time with his family before going back on tour. Tonight, Susanna has dropped off her two children with Cahill. 
along with Dorian's three, Cahill will be babysitting five of his seven children. Where are you going? I'm going to run over to friends. All right. Hang out. And, uh, All right, well, good seeing you. You too, man. I've known Dorian for many years. And I asked her about her relationship with Cahill, but she wasn't really interested in talking about it. So Dorian doesn't stay when you come over? Sometimes. And then sometimes she doesn't. Well, so it gives her, you know, opportunity to hang out. She's got the kids all the time. Right. You know, so. How many days a week? No, I'm here on the weekends. We see you. We see you. Yes, I'm here on the weekend. You see me. No, you don't. You know, when I'm, when I'm in town. Right. And we have fun. I act crazy. Okay, well, what's this? tell me what this is. What is this here? Teapot. And what do you do with this? Wash it. All right. And you make tea. All right. Come on, talk to me. Do you serve people with your yeah. tea? So, no, uh, she doesn't. Yes, she does. Do your brothers play with you when you play tea? No. They don't? Nobody plays with you? Who plays with you when you play tea? Do I ever play tea with you? No. I never played tea with you? Do okay, well, I? I'm not going to play Yeah, last year. Last year? Last year? Uh -huh. I have to give you all the cups. Other people have to pay me. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, put the scissors down. Put the scissors down. I'm gonna make a hook. Camera this. Camera this. You take a picture of. Hey, what are you doing? Shut your mouth. Oh, you want some? Sorry. I have it. Yeah. Can I go to the bathroom with you? Yes, yes. You have candy in your hand. <gasps> Candy? Where'd you get the candy from? Hmm? Where'd you get the candy from? He got it in his hand. Come here. You can eat it tomorrow. It's late. You don't eat candy this time of night. One piece, one piece, one piece. Too late. Please. One piece. Long. Okay. Ah! Oh, I can't help me. You're a goof. Okay. You're a goof. Let's go to the house here. I'll give you a treatment. Come on. Cahill and the band had one last gig before going back on the road. It was downtown in Chicago's Gallery District. So it's been seven years of being involved in the world of Cahill El Sabar, and it's been definitely an experience. Uh, when I first met him, he told me that love was the first music of his life, and that is definitely true. And that music was the first love of his life? Of his life. Uh -huh. And second to that were his children, and third to that was <laughs> the cultural work that he did, and after that were women. <laughs> so I had someone else ask me this question too, what, what, is, what is it like to compete you know, against music? And it's really not a competition, but it's really more respecting um, what you know, what I signed on to do. So, you know, you that's part of a relationship that you have with someone and, and respecting who he is as an artist, I really think it has taught me quite a bit about carving out my own identity and my own niche in the world. But he definitely gives quality time to the kids. Um, extremely sensitive to their needs in that respect. Um, has a really unique relationship with each and every one of the children. Wave of a 
Afrocentric garb and the, you know, serious approach to the music can be really intimidating to people who don't know anything about this music. He is a showman, um, but in certain ways, he's unwilling to, and I think correctly in many cases, um, be the kind of show person that would become the uh, the stereotypical caricature of a percussionist that the media would be able to embrace and accept. We arrived 45 minutes late. The audience was already seated and waiting. Hey, I'd say that working with him, I mean, on an artistic level is, is usually on amazing. Um, on an organizational level or a logistics level, it, it could be a little difficult. Playing with Cahill, just in general, is always something <laughs> challenging it's it's always it's always going to be challenging because you, you never know what's going to happen next you never know if you're going to play if you're not going to play what you're going to play having an orderly approach is essential and that's difficult sometimes what he needed and what he probably if he doesn't have one now to this day the most is he needs a manager. Thanks for everybody being patient once again with the ethnics coming in, but uh, we always look forward to uh, seeing everybody here, John and John. <laughs> Come, you, you. 
feeling bigger. Oh, no! Can we all take a ride? Oh, no! You really make us fly. Oh, no! Can we all take a ride? Oh, no! You really make us fly. Oh, no! Coleman. Coleman. Can we all take a ride? Coleman. Oh, no! Coleman. Coleman. You really make us fly. Oh, no! Coleman. Coleman. Can we all take a ride? Take a ride, take a ride. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> 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 The next day, the band holds an improvisational workshop for classically trained students. But Kai Hill is running late. <laughs> That's like some Pringles shit, you know? Yeah, right. it's 3 o'clock. Yeah. Maybe it's 3.30. Yeah. Maybe it's 3 <laughs> I'm not blaming anybody. I just think shit is silly and unprofessional again. <laughs> Where's the head of 16 hours can you feel the power? Can you yeah. feel it? But they've been on it for a minute. Feel it. I think tends to go into these things um, and kind of trust his instincts. And in most cases, it works out, but there's a lot of uh, chaos that accompanies it, and that can be cause a lot of tension. So we had this idea that we would get together with you guys and we'd work on some concepts in improvisation. Feeling. You got a strength of one 
darkness in your sound. The idea to improvise comes from heart and feeling. Once you learn your instrument, it's all for yours and dealing. Keeping the groove is part of the move. Knowing how to make it work. Once you get into that pocket, there's no telling where you can take it. You're feeling good, like music should. Keep it right in the groove, y'all. And then you can move, y'all. Keep it right in the groove, y'all. And then you can move, y'all. We're gonna let the guitar have some. Much fun. Fun is a really important part of doing good work. Fun is a really important part of being inspired and having that motivation. We shouldn't underestimate fun. You know, it, it seems like a lot of times there's a little message that's somewhere in the back of our consciousness that says, if this is fun, it probably isn't really good for me. And I think that's really not right. Mm -hmm. I think that's really not, doesn't really bear itself out. If you're really having fun, you're probably doing something good, and it will excite you, and keep you excited and inspired. Cool. Yeah, those kids are nice. Really nice. You were up late last night, weren't you, Tony? Yeah. Pretty late. Oh, I love to be here. What's up, buddy? Very good. She's, um, like that. You know, she, I thought she was like that. She's a tree. Yeah, she's, a, she's just there. But it's about architecture and, and, and creation. You have it like this, and it goes out like that. You got that on the shoulders. You just gotta have this for flight. each other through the gift of love and all that it brings. For real. <laughs> At the Temple Bar, Kai Hill was opening for Malcolm Jamal Warner's band. But he was pretty upset because the management claimed they didn't have enough time to give him a proper sound check. You know, you come to a venue like this and the people, they're not familiar with you at all. Shit, you've been doing this 35 years and you're still walking to places where it's just inconsequential that you're there. And so that doesn't necessarily make the, the best impact 
for the reception of, of, of creative expression. You know, what's going to happen for us, though, is that the, the, the uniqueness and the novelty of surviving allows you an audience, you know, of unlimited potential because you're going to be the only thing that exists that's like that. Last man standing. It's too deep. 35 years. To the stage, come a long way to play for you tonight. Let's give it up for the Ethnic Heritage Assembly. Thank you. Who's calling? Who's calling? What time is it? It's 4.15 mm -hmm. in the morning. 4.15, what is it, Saturday? Saturday. February what? February 25th, Santa Monica. Morning. Morning. Mm -hmm. Morning. Josh is here. Reporting fraction. I'm tired. I feel like I'm back on the test. <laughs> you can get to see in that shit, but it is the best in the land. You make it yourself, huh? I make it myself, and I, I have my own special little tricks and, you know, my own special ways, just like Martha Stewart does, except I'm not Martha Stewart, you know? It's some tight shit here, ain't it? Yeah, man. I'm some trying not to get yucky, yucky. Look at that boy. Talking about can't transition in different environments and succeed. Every crook and corner, you find a way to work around these situations to come up with something that uniquely puts you on the edge. Shit. Yeah. And this shit unbelievable? I mean, so many worlds that exist. It's some deep shit. You know, because you don't even know why you're put in all these different places, but you know you're there when you're there. You know, just try to give your best. Yeah, they let us change it here. Oh, yeah, I told you. Some amazing stuff, Jack. Man, all my life I've been chasing, trying to figure out <clears throat> as an adult how you live without worrying about shit. It's like, man, I've been pillow to post all my fucking life trying to figure out how to do what I do, make balance ends meet, and then not get frustrated trying to do what appears to be the impossible. Be creative in a mirror. How do you think your success rate is at this point? Well, if nothing else, I got an S for survival. There we go.
It's like, you know, since the shit depends on me so much rhythmically, I can't depend on it rhythmically. And that gets frustrating. Because I have to push so much shit for so many people. There are very few situations I've had in my life where I get anything pushed for me. playing rhythm and he was hard to play a solo and usually at the end of the solos he likes to be left alone you know right. so I left him alone and he got all sucked oh, his, on your solo or his solo on his solo oh. I don't understand yeah Kyle just gets pissed off sometimes it's, it's his career not mine you know <laughs> <laughs> Everything seemed fine that morning, but when Cahill left the van at the rest stop, I asked Farid what happened on stage last night. So tonight I cut him off, and he had a tantrum because I stopped playing when he was having a solo. You know, I mean, it, it's yeah, if you do, then you don't, right? So for you to think that you know what the hell is going on and everybody else doesn't is one of the supreme arrogances of, of that, that's even possible. You know, and the worst thing you can do is not acknowledge that different people have different perspectives and let that shit get to you, because it shouldn't get to you. There's no reason for any of that shit to get to anybody, because no one's, no one's here for the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Cahill had an opportunity to, to, to introduce himself to a whole new crowd, and he blew it. You think so? I know so. Really? They didn't like it? No, it's not. They loved it, but there was no show. There was no ending, and a whole, whole bunch of people wanted a second set. What I find though is when, as a leader, man, when you do those kind of things on stage, <laughs> it, it affects your crowd psychosomatically. Absolutely. And they might dig the music, but they not necessarily going with you because you've interrupted. You brought some negative energy into the flow of things. Mm -hmm. I just don't go there. I used to go there a little bit, and uh, yeah, I don't go there. Yeah, it's just, I can't afford to. Yeah. You if you wanted me to keep playing, you should have just said, hey, keep playing. You know, Where is it? It's simple. It's not, it's no, 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 no emotional baggage needs to be attached mm -hmm. to a simple suggestion or request <clears throat> from the leader to a side man who loves him and supports him. And if you said, you know, you know, Farid, I need you to stand on your head and take off all your clothes and play the guitar with your feet, you know, I'll give it my best shot and I'll, be, and I'll smile while doing it. Because that's my job, mm -hmm. to serve him happily, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if he thinks I'm trying to undermine him, then that's all in his head. And I know you're not trying to undermine. I know you're not trying to undermine. You know I'm not trying to undermine. We all know that. Right. You know. So it's in his head. Of course it's in his head. You just can't have your ego attached to, to the music, I don't think. <laughs> Ready? Sun is out. Uh should be pretty interesting mix, that, you know, rock kind of thing, and kind of, I don't know what the other thing is. It's been quite a journey to the uh, Northern California environment. But, you know, it's all cool. All guys children, you know? <laughs> Thank you. 
I think he was ready to get out there and really pull off like a dance performance and the group fell away and it didn't happen and he got really frustrated. And I could tell that there was a point where we were just kind of lost and all trying to find a way to kind of to end the song. I couldn't really figure out what was going on, you know, what he was mad about or whatever. And he just straight stormed off the stage and left us all just kind of standing up there like, what's going on here? On the one hand, you know, I can say Cahill is not a great communicator, and that affects his uh, ability to create a good energy on stage. But at the same time, you know, he's an intense cat, and that's, that's also part of it. You know, if he was, you know, happy-go-lucky, I don't think we'd really be listening to the same music. You know? sometimes, sometimes I can see just giving it a second more before side events felt up. Just give it a second more sometimes would help me. Because sometimes I'm dealing with something, you know? Like I was dealing with tuning my E string back up to regular, right? Because I had tuned it an octave lower, right? Let me put it this way. Every night, I'm going through the same thing in terms of once it gets to the end of the piece, it does not lock into just a simple space. You know, I was saying about the piano, I was saying, bring the volume down. I was working with it, yes. My, the thing is, is the two things. It's one, they don't have a sustained pedal for them. I mean, do you want to hear what I have to say, or do you want to like throw your no, hands No, no, I can make a face, Josh, and you can still talk. Right, but we can have a constructive conversation. About I didn't say anything right now, so you're talking. You looked at my eyes and then said something. I didn't say nothing. I'm listening to you. Right, but you're coming at me very aggressively when we're having trying to have a constructive Josh, I wasn't coming aggressive. I didn't say anything. It feels aggressive to him. I don't give a fuck whether he feels aggressive or not. Well, that's the He's problem. aggressive as well. We all are aggressive. But I didn't say nothing. I'm just looking at it. I'm not no goddamn little kid. And neither are you. So I, if I'm looking, I didn't say nothing. You anyway, didn't say anything. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and say what you got to say about the keyboard, though? Let's get Look, the, oh, sure. done with the conversation already. This is one of the problems that is happening with the band right now. And either Cahill can be interested in some constructive feedback about what's going on or he cannot be and then nothing changes and it just becomes this fucked up cycle and nothing positive happens. It really becomes a decision of what we want to do. Man, I've been playing music for 35 years. I Some of the baddest man. motherfuckers in the world. I fully so when it comes to talking about a simple thing about a dynamic, I don't go through that with a bunch of musicians all over the fucking world. It's a simple dynamic. You know, and this shit is my life. It ain't no game. Sometimes I can be difficult because, one, I'm very direct. And I can be in your face and with some people that is considered a threatening aggression. It's I'm working for something. And I'm sincere about that. I'm trying to get this energy, this music, this ritual, if you will, to its highest state. He's just super intensive, intensive kind of cat, man. That's all right, sir. I deal with the man, I just don't bring my ego to the table at all. Neither do I, but it comes to a point where you like, you start, your constitution starts to be compromised, man, and then it's just like, that's when it's just like, this is enough, man, enough is enough. Fuck this, man, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I really don't know if I can fucking do this anymore. Because it's like, I'm not making money. I'm gaining skills or stages of time or whatever, like blah blah blah, but like, you know, at the end of the day, I could be home and make at home making records. And he's probably in the same place. He's probably like, fuck this shit, I'm not doing this shit with this kid anymore, this DJ shit, blah blah blah, whatever. I do not sweat this shit, man. It is what it is. Even with my groups, I, I get huffy and puffy and all that kind of stuff, man, but at the end of the day, it's not that fucking serious, man. After last night's blow up, the van was real quiet on his way to Portland. Excuse me, officer. Hi. We have a concert in the chapel tonight, so we've got to load these instruments. Sure. Today, not too many jokes. All business. That's fine.
bring it down just slightly. Cahill is attentive to the sound levels and the room ambience. The band finally had what they've never had before on this tour, a rehearsal. Okay, cool. Now, remember, this is really an acoustic room. But I think you get the idea that these guys are serious, smart, accomplished, and, well, uh, a whole lot of fun to listen to. Anyways, without any further ado, I'm going to present to you, coming straight from Chicago, a place I regard to as my own sweet home, Epic Heritage Ensemble. Maybe the blow up from the last show was just what the band needed to right the ship. They listened to each other on stage. They were attentive to the cues. And the crowd absolutely loved them. It was, in my opinion, the best show on the tour. This is also their last show together. Farid had a prior commitment, and Josh, while still working on tour, never played with the Ethnics again. On the very last night, I had an understanding about Cahill. I found out Cahill is a man of great contrast. He's a loving father, a great musician, composer, and improviser, and can communicate with a diverse range of people but he has trouble communicating the simplest musical cues with his own band. Was it just his tour? What was going on with him? It was the last night I wanted to talk to Cahill about the tensions we've all been feeling ever since the federal marshals showed up at the South Shore High School concert. The one thing we've never talked about was this woman, who I've never met, suing him for child support. How you feel about this tour and the chain of events that led you to this point in your life? I mean, you know, the chain of events, you know, that led me to where that shit is at. My dick, you know. And the thing about this shit is, uh, men like to trip and see themselves as the cat, but. Uh, Sometimes we beat a mouse. You know, she saw me in a newspaper and uh, I guess was attracted to my image. Time and time again, though, man, there were these telltale signs that said, leave this motherfucker alone. <laughs> you know? saw me in the newspaper, then called me. We started hanging out a little bit here and there. And of course, I was seeing, you know, other people. But, you know, I mean, I've always let people know that I'm dealing other women or whatever. Because right. then that's their choice. You know, you know where my shit is at. I'm, you know, a lot of cats bullshit about it. And I was like, are you going to deal with it? Or if you don't want to deal with it, that's cool, too, because that is your choice. And then she started pressuring me about time, my situation, all that, and really didn't know me. So I was like, whoa, you know, this is intense. I didn't think anything about it. About three years went by. <clears throat> and um, 
she uh, gave me a call one day. I called you because I heard about your father dying and uh, I wanted to give you my condolences. So I said, thank you, you know, that's cool. And uh, you know, so you know, and then she started macking. You know, I'm proud of you. You did, and uh, you know, I realized that I love you and I miss you. I'm like, oh man. Should have hung up the phone right then. But like, what did you do? <laughs> Our house and sit sorry. Right, so I, know I should have hung up the phone right then. Yeah, Lord have mercy. So, <laughs> and I told him, I said, okay, well, it's really nice to see you and everything. I gotta go. <clears throat> she said, well, can you give me a ride home? I said, yeah, no problem. So I told him, I said, well, take care. You know, she said, that's it. I got excited. Mm. So uh, I parked the car and went up to her place. We hit it. <laughs> Shit. I go out of town to Albuquerque, New Mexico. I get a call while I'm out of town. Hey, this is Give me a call. I don't think much of it. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? I'm pregnant. I said, you I said, baby, I just dealt you a week ago, seven days. It can happen in three days. These women decide this is the man I want a baby with. All right. you better There's no me. real thoughts about what the child may need or if this is really the right situation based on mutual consent. Right. It's emotionally, this is what I want. This is it. I got this motherfucker. Right. This is the nigga I want a baby with. All right. Some weeks, months go by, she wants to talk about relationship, about a commitment, mm -hmm. about being one of my women. I said, but that's my choice. You can't make that choice for me. She was talking to me about doing a polygamous relationship. I was like, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, and so it's like everything is telling me this is another kind of person. You done made a mistake here. You made a big mistake here because this person is set with a way of looking things and she has a plan for you. Right. And if you don't follow the plan the way she's describing it, she's going to have another plan. Man, she called Dorian, who I was living with at the time. You know, I had the two sons with mm -hmm. Kahari and Kahari. Told Dorian that I slept with her in the van that we have. Just doing things to be mean, to say nasty, ugly things. You know, I didn't have sex in the van. Anybody that knows me knows I hate messing my clothes up. I don't have sex with nobody in my clothes. <laughs> Eventually, proceedings were begun in regards to this child support case. It's which I'm where I'm at now, eight years later. And, um... I've always been irresponsible when it comes to detail. Things about courts and the law is detailed. And I just have never functioned well on that kind of stuff. And when the first court stuff came to me, I was scared because I had never been to court for nothing. Then articles starts coming in the internet, in, in newspapers and stuff about me as a deadbeat dad and and the defaming of my character, what a negative and what a bad and what a horrible person. 
I am, and she don't care about none of that. Mm -hmm. You know, she basically resents the other kids because she feels that I've taken care of those kids and then neglected her son. So everything's hateful. Everything is you did something to me type shit, and this negative, ugly, ugly space, man. So if she defames my character and it inhibits my ability to work, then I think she's a little confused. On one side, she wants to get money from me, but on the other side, she wants to stop me from making money. And that's contradictory. You know, I live on the west side of Chicago in a very rough neighborhood, in a factory loft, you know? I don't have a car. I don't own any property, no home, no shit like that. Because, you know, I haven't been focused on, like, making lots of money. I've been focused on creating great art. I hope I will make, you know, a lot of money. And my children, you know, her child and, and all of my children will benefit. Why shouldn't I? I should be successful. I've worked hard, mm -hmm. you know. I do quality work. Mm -hmm. I'm considered to be the best in the world at what I do. Mm -hmm. So I think that will come. I'm in it now, and I never thought I'd be in a situation like this. I wouldn't wish this shit on nobody. Mm. Nobody, Jack. Kahil El Zabar. My name is George Lucas. I am making a film about the history and spirit of jazz being produced for Lucasfilm. And I'm currently looking for potential interviewees. About 13 years ago, I heard the Ethnic Heritage Ensemble play at Sweet Basil in New York. And the experience made a profound impression on me. In this film, I will examine the origins of jazz and different ways in which it is performed today. I tend to look at jazz as an approach to music, not as a particular set of styles. I hope this project sounds intriguing, and of course, I will be happy to discuss it with you further over the phone. I look forward to your reply. Sincerely yours, George Lucas. I mean, Cahill's a genius. So, um, you know, I don't worry about him so much as an artist, but uh, I do hope that he gets the recognition he, des he deserves. I suppose that's as much his choice as anybody's, though. I think that that concept came to him, or the desire to be known came to him for the desire to be to get paid and supported for what you do you know the thing is is that I mean he's a master at his instrument and he's a master at many other things he it, it, there's no reason he should be living at the level that he, he is so here was an avenue for him or a concept or a mantra for however long to be able to live by and I want to be known so I can get paid and keep on doing this and keep on bringing this art to people and keep on teaching people and, you know, and keep on keeping on. Like Dawkins says, it is what it is. What is this? Um, this is the 30-minute video for the, the um, George Lucas documentary. And so they sent me a copy of it. In um, the opera house and the night. Last month. Jazz was music of the people. Sometimes you have that time when you know you're just on and you connect with the people. It's a love vibration. It's something that says we are a part of people in the world and we serve a purpose and we have a pride for that and we have a need to share. And, and now you found out you do have another child. Oh yeah, we found out that um, uh, the baby is mine. Um, you know, and that's, that's a cross I have to bear. That's something I have to to deal with. You know, one thing is while other people are spending time trying to discuss me or figure me out, I don't do that. I'm not out here really trying to figure out, discuss, think about, or um, ridicule anybody because I'm too busy being known. I'm too busy doing, you know, and, and contributing rather than focusing on a bunch of petty shit. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So, I just noticed this here. Uh -huh. This is a doctorate. Yeah, full doctorate. <laughs> uh, a criminal indictment for child support and a PhD at the same time. Explain this to me again. Okay, this is a, um, a painting that I just finished um, this week. 
this body, which was creative and focused on, on the art, needed a translator, something that reflected that and could translate to both the commerce son and the consumer son. And this is called, you got me going in circles. Uh, 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 uh. Sometimes with the darlings, I'm a little hard to deal with because of this energy. But you know, uh, what uh, uh, Frank Sinatra say, I did it my way, you know? So, so that's what these paintings are about. And I need these outlets to express myself just to keep this motherfucking stress off of you. Thank God for art. Save your 